Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 436. Each week uh, we meet here to uh, review the uh, questions and answers uh, given on, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have uh, the inimitable Tim Kappa. Uh, Tim is based in Corby, about 100 miles north of uh, London. Um, he's CEO of onlineownership.com. He's also a Google product expert uh, in the um, um, Google My Business community. David Rosam is a leading internet marketer. He's based in Sussex, um, about... Uh, uh, or oh, 20 miles um, from London, um, I, I guess. And um, Masataki Wasa is based in Wimbledon. Um, he's a Google product expert. Um, you can find uh, uh, Masataki at uh, wasaweb.net, W A S A W E B dot N E T. And David can be found at davidrosam.com. Okay, let's go with our first question. Um, Christian ever asked the question, it's titled, A Great Drop in Search Impressions is a Fact. Goes on to say, after a website redesign and change of URL from dub, dub, dub to non dub, dub, dub. Um, it's double TPS full colon slash slash dub 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 dub. It's double TPS full colon slash slash. A great drop in search impressions uh, is a fact. Although I thought all dub 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 redirected to non dub dub dub, I figured out recently that something with this redirect was wrong. Even if people uh, came to the site, uh, they not not correctly formatted. Nevertheless, this is now fixed. Is there anything else that, that I need to think of as I try to get the site back to what it used to be? Or is it too late now after one year of uh, incorrect redirects? Well, if, I th if it's been one year, all of those have probably been filtered through. And yeah. Look, you've made the you made the correction now. It's just a uh, you know um, yeah. That was definitely not ideal. Um, yeah, definitely not. Like if you had noticed this a month in or so, you could have potentially you know uh kind of saved sort of the last bit depending on how much of the site google had gone through and crawled or how large it was but a year later it's kind of done now and now it's just a question of um uh working through it and you know look uh, yeah and moving on really building the site carrying on as such Thank you, Tim. All right, we've got 12 questions tonight, so let's um, move on to the next. This one from Alan Wicks. It's titled, uh, How Important is the Last Mod Field in the Sitemap? Yeah, I could just say not at all important, and then we can move on to the next one, I guess. But I'll read it down. Hello all, uh, hoping someone might be able to offer some guidance. How important is the last map mod field in the sitemap? The reason I ask is we're using an external sitemap, which is returning the time the page was last cached and therefore 6,000 pages, all basically returning the, the, the same date. I've noticed this is dropping new pages being indexed. So we are manually submitting through Search Console, but we are now hitting our daily quota. This excludes pages. Um, um, where are we? Um, 
Yeah, this includes pages we're just updating, which we are not submitting. The question is, should we consider fixing the last mod date as a priority? How important is this field? Any thoughts? Yeah, your your last last mod is. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know if if search engines actually even ever um, bothered with those. Maybe in the eighties. <laughs> I'm not sure if they ever did bother with that. Um, so no, I don't think it's a problem, but you should easily be able to just strip that out of your sitemap anyway, if it's bugging you. Um, the problem with things of not being indexed, um, this kind of started, hmm, kind of what, was it November? Or maybe a bit before, maybe it was October. And um, basically Google saying it's, sort of really i mean they're a bit ambiguous with it the stuff what they're saying in search console because you'll normally find it in the you'll find it in the oh geez which tab is it the coverage tab i think is it the coverage tab uh you'll find it in the coverage tab and you'll probably go down there and it'll show you discovered but not indexed which is pull you know they, they discover it in your site map and then they tell you look it's not indexed um their their reasoning or the the thing that they link to when you know with that kind of stuff is uh, they're basically hinting at um at quality um that's what they tend to be uh, that's what they seem to be hinting at but this started in october um i did have one brand new site that um is still battling with that i you know, uh, you know, in the first couple of months, we whacked in 44 pieces of content and I think they've only gone through about 20 odd. It's so like, you know, like half of it um, in a th couple of months, which is pretty lame. Um, I think, you know, um, yeah. So this, this is, this has become the new norm now. Uh, nothing gets indexed fast anymore uh, with Google. Um, Yeah, I, you know, um, the answer to your problem is not going to be last mod field in the sitemap. I think that's for certain. Um, um, I'm a bit bemused, I suppose would be the word, um, by the fact that all 6,000 pages share the same last mod date when, logically speaking, they shouldn't because I assume that you haven't updated the page itself. And if Google crawls it, and it will look up at the last mod header in the response, in the HTTP response, then they'll, you know, they'll, they will see a different timestamp. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not so sure what you're using to generate that sitemap but it may not be doing you any favors. It's unlikely that it's doing much damage, but I don't think that's doing any favors. Thank you, thank you Mr. Taki, and thank you, Tim. All right, I think we can ro roll on from this one. Um, stuck with plan A. Anyway, um, number three on our run list is uh, titled, Will a Basic 301 Redirect Be Enough? Uh, it's from El Bakito. Um, he goes on to say, yeah, so I've been delegated with the task of transferring my current site to a domain. So will a Basic 301 Redirect be enough? I understand we have to accept a five to 20% drop in organic traffic. Um, feel free to suggest or advise anything. I will dig deep into it without further annoyance through follow up questions. Before we well, yeah. so, go on, so no, go on, David. Well, I was just going to mention um, Brenda Ballone. Um, 
uh, who um, is a stalwart uh, of our community uh, on Facebook and uh, um, is constantly answering questions and making dumb SEO questions such a valuable resource. Please go on, Tim. <laughs> and Tim said, go on, Dave. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. I was just uh, <laughs> going to try and uh, try and prod this idea of a basic 301 redirect. Um, and also, I think someone else pointed out, um, what was it, transferring my current site to a domain. Um, if this, this means just changing a domain um, and the basic 301 redirect, um, yes, perhaps. Um, I assume that the site hasn't changed in structure. They haven't done anything silly like moving uh, moving it from WordPress to uh, to something else and changing the URL structure. Um, yes, perhaps. Um, it really depends what's going on here. Um, and you know, if, if you've changed the, if you've changed the the structure, you're going to have to um, individually um, redirect pages. Um, yeah, I'm not uh, as I'm as I'm answering this or attempting to answer this. I'm kind of thinking, well, hang on, what is going on here? Um, any more thoughts, anyone? Um, it re I, my, my answer is. It depends what you're actually trying to do. Yeah, well, um, just the one thing to add is that um, Googlebot, um, if all of a sudden a whole heap of uh, pages um, disappear, disappear from a site, Googlebot will you know, mistakenly assume that, that there's something uh, systemically wrong with the, the, the site. Uh, and. Uh, it will back off um, crawling and uh, um, also um, if, if, if it look, looks like um, the site is, is really crook, it, it will um, uh, stop um, displaying it in search results temporarily until it comes back online. If you go through the comments halfway down, the reason for changing becomes apparent. Um, their brand got sued by a closely named brand who came first. So um, that's a problem oh, yeah. because you know if you're redirecting, you're still using that old name which you got mm. sued on, uh, and transferring that traffic to a new site. You know which. The new name might be okay, you know, it may not be infringing on someone's trademark, but it's still benefiting from trademark infringement. So, I mean, that would be something you need to talk to a lawyer because can, you know, you got sued and then you decided, okay, right, um, going to abandon this current uh, domain name, start up a new one, that's, you know, that's okay. But if you're still using the old, if you still possess the old one and then redirecting traffic from the old one, trademark infringing old domain, the new domain, I'm not so sure where, where that stands legally. And you could be making yourself vulnerable, legally speaking, if you use this arrangement. Yeah, I think that's a, a very good point, Masataki. Okay, will we move on to the next? Yeah, I, I guess I guess there could be a situation here where where the uh, where the uh, this other company is actually suing them for the domain or made yeah. it. Yeah, because the domain name would be um, judged by arbitration, wouldn't it? I mm. don't think the courts would necessarily tell someone to hand over the domain name. I suppose that's possible. I don't know. Yeah, but I don't know. I think I think in that situation, I would talk to a lawyer who knows things, these things, because you don't want to 
in there be sued further <laughs> no. for damages just because you, know, because you keep using the um, old domain name. Okay, can we uh, hit up number four on our run list? Okay, it's titled Let's Chat Bounce Rate. Um, it's from Mari Sa. And uh, Mari asks uh, SEO pros, let's chat bounce rate. Um, articles are saying that a 41 to 75% bounce rate is the ideal range that most sites fall into. Help me understand this. Uh, how is that acceptable? Um, they are also saying that a high bounce rate is not always bad. The company I'm doing content for sells memberships and certifications. I don't understand how a bounce rate higher than 40% can possibly be acceptable. And I'm trying to lower it. Um, a lot of the content is self-promotional and does not uh, speak to targets. Uh, I'm trying to adjust it so that um, um, prospects uh, can understand um, the value proposition right away. At what bounce rate percentage should content be better optimised to try to lower it. Oh, bounce rate is a real can of worms, isn't it? Um, there, there's uh, the argument that uh, a 100% bounce rate is is good because the person who has come to the, all of the people who come to the page have found what they want and bugger off. Um, but that's not to say what they've actually, that's, what they have actually done um it's a real it depends thing this isn't it um and also i i, I try to ignore bounce rate because it is a can of worms um i think you're better off in this case looking um for um for, for um conversions uh conversion numbers um because uh, what are they doing sending members and certifications that's what you want you want higher membership rates higher certification rates um 40 percent um you know it, it's it's the people who well it depends what what are they doing what are the pages doing um are you actually selling that membership and that certification off the page that is getting this 40 percent bounce rate or are you have are they having to go somewhere else read something else and register and so on and so forth um i really would say um don't worry um about whether it's 40 or 80 look at what you're actually getting profit wise look at what what people are doing in terms of um, what what they're doing within sight, um, yeah, that would yeah. be my thought anyway. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, bounce rate is just uh, it's kind of meaningless, really, in a sense, uh, because you don't know. I mean. It, it can be completely even also even skewed from the fact that they they originated on a, uh, on a another platform article site um and something was misrepresented where they thought they could get a cheaper entry on membership or something they clicked through they read it it was like ah no actually no this wasn't uh, this wasn't quite what i was looking at or thinking of and then leave um and like David said, did they convert from that page? And that's why they left. Um, I mean, there is so many things to, to, to say to someone, I'm going to try and lower the bounce rate. It's like, uh, it's a bit crazy, especially if, um, if, how could, I mean, if all of that came from, uh, if all of that came from a referral page, for example, and you had a high bounce rate, I would look at the referral page because that referral page is doing its job, except they, they're leaving. 
Now, the other point is, if you had, let's say, a 70% bounce rate, um, and all of it was sitting on um, 25 seconds average, right? And if you looked at the page, and it literally took you 30 seconds to, let's say, get through the first paragraph, scan through to find the big call to action button and scroll down and it takes you 25 to 30 seconds then that page is pretty much doing what you want like people do not read anymore like they really honest to god do not read people scan now so if you're thinking well they should be on this for a minute and it's 27 seconds that's because people are just scrolling down um yeah uh, bounce rate is just a can of worms um it's like a contact page should in theory have 100 percent bounce rate your um sign up to an email should be 100 percent in that sense because they they they're leaving it from there um I would make sure you're tracking specific conversions um, because like Dave said, it's what actually happened with that, the, those people that came in. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I don't, I, to be honest, I've like always just, sort of ignored bounce rates um, in, in that sense um, because I've always focused on, uh, you know, the goal completion on that page or depending or what the conversion was or, you know, other, other kind of things um, because people just do not read. Um, the only one that I tell you what, I've like got one client I work with who's got an exceptionally low bounce rate on their, not on other page, but on their category pages, because essentially there are products and it's almost like an infinite scroll. So people can spend up to 10 minutes if they were looking through, you know, the different, the, the, the different properties, right? Just scrolling through and not actually clicking through to anything. Um, so those are pretty low, but it's not, it, but that's purely because the user is scrolling and, and viewing. Um, so, but the ultimate for them then is actual emails and calls because, you know, the, the people are looking for property. Um, so the actual amount of time actually means nothing in that sense. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a can of worms. I think you need to, you know, um, I think you need to identify what they're doing on the page, if you can. Are they leaving it to click through to something? Have they completed a goal? Are they doing what that page intended them to do? If your answer is yes, and the bounce rate, I don't know, what, 70%, then the page is doing what it intended to do. Uh, they found what they needed and they've left. Um, you could also just, you know, like, I don't know, um, give yourself some peace of mind is maybe uh, do a free trial on Crazy Egg. Yeah. Um, it, which is a heat map. And then it'll tell you what's happening. Uh, it'll tell you if they scroll down past the page, like if it's just the one single page, you'll see what they were specifically looking at. And if that, if you'll click through, if your call to action button is higher on the top of the page and they, and they, and they, and they're actually clicking that or doing that, or they've completed reading the page, it'll give you a kind of idea. But I think what you need to understand what they're doing um, on the page, what the other metrics are like, and then that will say to you, right, well, my the the the, the, the actual completions and the signups is good um, per the amount of visitors that are actually unique visitors coming to the site, right? Because your bounce rate also, then that's another thought, your bounce rate doesn't separate out unique and second time visits, hey? So a bounce rate is massively skewed and incorrect. Um, so I would put first time users, second time users. A first time user might be on there longer 
a second time user might be in dashed because they intended to come back they've come back in and then gone through to whatever they needed um yeah you you really can't just look at a bounce rate as a bounce rate you really need to to understand what the user is doing who the user is and what it was it's all about yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, all of that <laughs> yeah exactly i mean um websites are means to something really if you're selling something then you want to sell something what's the point of having a website with naught percent bounce rate but no conversions it comes down to that so yeah i wouldn't worry about bounce rates yeah i i always think about it's it's always think about things like this in terms of sales you wouldn't expect to to sell to 60 percent of the people who come to your your website or to your shop or uh to your stall or whatever um you've just got to find that that percentage of people who are primed to sell to um and be realistic about it you know that that's it you don't sell to every person who walks by your shop um some of them come in some of them have a rummage through your goods and some of them actually buy um so you know think of think of that think think of the the real picture of what people do um and don't get caught up in this crazy metric mm -hmm. so i remember having a like uh, so it's i remember having a conversation with a with a with a client once years and years ago um with sort of a little boutique hotel and we had worked on the site for about a year um and they were average so they had 25 rooms right um and they were averaging about four thousand unique visits so uh, unique new brand new visits uh visitors a month and they would still go and they're still miss and that's oh we're only on like 60 percent you know occupancy um this month and and i'm like okay i can get them to you but if you and this was like i don't know easy 10 years ago but if you're charging you know you can you can you can we can if you're charging 297 pounds a night right if you reduce that down to to you know to something else you could you could completely fill that fill, fill those rooms but you've set that price limit and people that are coming through are interested you need they want to see they want to but where do they leave they leave when they see the price tag so and something and it's the same thing like uh, you know um you've got to set your price level um and and it's sometimes it's it's not for everyone and also some people could be window shopping you know there's a whole load of variety of things uh why people land on something um and unfortunately there is no some there's no kind of psychological analytics that you could plug into a into a site to uh, assess users what they're really really looking for that would be lovely um and it could also be quite scary and like you can look at a alarm bell going nut job nut job or yeah psycho psychopath <laughs> yeah so uh, no, unfortunately, every single user in this world is completely different. We do not under and you, there's no way of understanding what that user, um, you know, uh, is really all about. Excellent. Okay, let's rock, rock on to number five on our run list. This one from Shika Shukla. Um, could anyone explain how to do an SEO audit, how to carry out an, an SEO audit? Um, I've asked, I have been asked to, to uh, carry out an, an SEO audit on a ma music magazine website, having 25,000 pages and provide solutions for issues and prepare a report for the client. My responsibility is to do only on-page uh, SEO as technical and content writing uh, is handled by another team. Um, so I wonder if that means that his responsibility is only off-page SEO. Um, anyway, um, 
He said, I used Screaming Frog and found uh, only three issues which were missing uh, an alt tag, a duplicate title, and a long title. My manager asked, and my manager said that, that this is not enough. I've never done an audit before. Could anyone explain how to do an SEO audit and what should I include uh, in the report? Well, an SEO audit is a unique kind of thing in itself. Um, um, now you've chucked it through Screaming Frog and it's just giving you the basic W3 errors kind of thing. Um, but what, like, why have they come to you? What do they perceive the issue to be? Uh, what is the analytics saying? um like you know if they perceive an issue you should find out what they perceive the issue to be or what the goal to be and then look at your analyst look at the analytics and then say right okay this is where we're probably missing out on and then look at different things so you could be looking at the internal structure you could be looking at you know opportunities for the site um a, a lot of audits don't have to be about something being wrong an audit can be about taking and moving that side forward so with with uh with i think was it a music magazine yeah. have they uh you know do you do you have different sections for bands are you creating entities out of those like this like entities are they marked up properly? Are you using structured data? Do you want to compete in that section where somebody searches for a band and you include it within the knowledge panel or, um, you know, for that band as, as you know, can you create entities out of different things? So an SEO audit doesn't have to be about something that's wrong. Yes, it can be because if there's something inherently wrong based upon this, the, the client's perceived issue with it or uh analytics will tell you if there's an issue like in that sense like uh, i don't know what the whole goal of it is like you know do do they get fifty thousand people but they don't get a lot of signups like i don't know i don't know what the goal is so so you could be looking at it from two points of view what is the issue what's the perceived issue how can you possibly fix that then you can also look at it from how can this be structured better in a sense to provide or take advantage of um entities that this that, that the site offers like has it not been taken advantage has it not structured its way that you could uh identify um areas or opportunities for the site to become more visible or to become to to, to be displayed more prominently in search um so yeah like an audit doesn't have to be about something being wrong it could be about growing it and how do you grow it so basically a plan on if we wanted to achieve this this is what the potentials are and you would you would break down break down those etc cetera, etc cetera. thank you tim uh anybody else all right, we're looking now at number six on our run list. It's from Chadwin Williams. It's titled, Does This Even Need to Be Fixed? Um, Chadwin said, hi, I'm new to this group. I have a really dumb question. Sorry in advance if I'm not explaining it properly. In Ahrefs, I keep getting an issue that needs to be fixed in terms of redirects. This site in particular was HTTP and is now HTTPS. AHREPS said how to fix it uh, is recommended to replace the links to the internal redirected URLs on your website with the direct links to the destination pages where possible. I have no redirecting links. Uh, is there a step that I'm missing? Uh, does this uh, uh, even need to be fixed C 
so as I understand it then, um, there are links on the pages um, that point to the old um, setup. So instead of all the internal links on pages um, in the site being, um, which was it? Um, Is it HTTP to HTTPS? Um, so if you haven't changed the the links um, in the documents, then someone clicks on that link, it would go to HTTP, and then that would be redirected to HTTPS. So instead of having to go through that, if you change all the existing links within your documents to the new um, protocol, then that saves that redirect. I think that's what the tool is trying to tell you. Thank you, Mr. Taki. I hadn't thought of that. I thought this was just a, one of those wonderful times when uh, SEO tools uh, throw up um, a problem that wasn't a problem. <laughs> of which there are many instances. But anyway, that's another thing. But yeah, um, I think you could be right. Oh, yeah. Well, Michael Martinez pointed that out, missed that. Okay. We're halfway there. Um, moving on to number seven on our run list. Um, El Bacchino asks another question. He says, I do indulge myself with the directories. Um, he said, so I don't buy backlinks as one shouldn't. However, I do indulge myself with the directories. Um, and this is a dumb directory submission question. He said, you know how there are niche relevancy factors when, when it comes to regular backlinks and mentions? It, is it the same with directories? Because some of these look spammy, but hold all the categories. So, um, you you don't you you don't need directories now. I don't know if like. Directories now are pretty much uh, for local because uh, they're kind of local. They include an address, which which do help. Uh, but if you're just a normal online e-commerce, no, definitely not. Um, it's, no, like, yeah, I mean, no, like even some, if, even in the local, the local site, some of the you know some of the like uh, some, some of the big local directories like local one two three which is which is one of the better tiered directories out there you know those can take up to four or five months before uh, a submission is even you know because because the quality or the the, the use of it in terms of a search engine now is like nothing um so if you're not and um, unless you uh, if you're not a local business with an actual physical address then no those those are those yeah not really um if you are local don't don't just stick to the ones which um the top tier and if there are any niche relevant ones when i say niche relevant ones you get specific directories out there just for plumbers, just for electricians, just for, um, uh, you know, um, c car sales. So so look at just a couple of top tier ones if you're a local business and then then look at the niche ones and then that's it. So depending on where you are, there may only be 15 and that's it. Job done. End of. Move on to actually building the site. Uh, and looking at better things than just directories. Yeah, um, 
directories uh, before there were search engines we had directories um before we had cars we had horses and carts um we don't use horses and carts very often um they don't have any uh any relevance to our modern life um don't bother with directories Okay, I must go back and read that um, later on. Okay. Right, that's it for number seven. Um, and here's number eight. One, Dallas A. Jr. asked a question titled, Does the country where you register your domain impact your search engine optimization? Uh, if a .com page is registered in Africa, um, would it rank lower compared to a .com page registered in uh, the uh, European Union um, to a US Googler? Well, I, I'd say while, while you guys are uh, thinking about it, uh, I'd say uh, um, that first of all, Googlebot is agnostic um, to um, the um, URL. It, it, it doesn't care whether, whether it's a, a .com or a .co. But um, the, the, um, the thing is that when you're registering something in Africa, um, you're, you're, you're just simply dealing with an African uh, reseller. Um, the um, actual .com um is um um and was initially uh, in the uh, usa and uh, it, it's um it's still the same registrar um it's just that it's being sold from america yeah, so the, the, i think the answer is that does the country where you register your domain impact your SEO? No, 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 no. Anybody else? No. Okay. Mobin Ali asks question nine on our run list. Which one is better for a website and in what way? Uh, and he asks, uh, he says website.com slash category dash base slash post or website.com uh, slash post or page. And Michael Martin is um, um, what a guy. Um, he, he spent so much uh, effort in, into WCA questions and it's appreciated very, very much. Um, his knowledge is um, widespread. Um, Michael said, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by better. I don't think it matters except how you feel about the aesthetics and organisation. Always create the kind of website that you yourself would want to visit, bookmark, and recommend to other people. And that includes how you structure the URLs. Well said. No complaints, David? Um, I... I generally go for website.com forward slash category dash base stroke post type structure um, because um, it, it gives a bit more order to the site as it grows um, and it helps people understand what's going on if they should look at the, uh, uh, at the, uh, at the, uh, at the URL. Um, so, yeah um i'm i've gone away from liking uh flat structures like website.com stroke post 
although I do have uh, websites with that sort of structure. It, um, I think it can help in, 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 in bigger sites, but uh, I, won't go, uh, I won't go changing for one for the other uh, on a site that already exists. Excellent. Thank you, David. Let's uh, roll on to number 10 on our run list. Uh, it's titled, Is it best to repost them or simply update? Kristen Hansen Lowry said, uh, or uh, went on to, to ask, okay, a quick query. I just can't seem to resolve. When updating old blog posts, is it best to repost them or simply update? Uh, I always put in language advising that the uh, article has been updated, but just update it where it is without reposting it as a new article. Um, what's the best practice here? Well, the um, it depends what you're doing, doesn't it? If if the the the, the simple answer is if you're doing a lot to the blog post. Um, then uh, write a new one. If you're just making a, a small uh, adjustment to it, uh, say a fact has changed over time, um, then probably just update it. Although, you know, it also depends on what you mean by old blog posts. Um, if you just update an old one, um, Google might, uh, might end up struggling to see it. Um, might ignore it um, for uh, some time or totally. Um, so, yeah, um, what are you trying to do, and what's the what's the site look like? But generally, just follow your nose. If it's a small thing, just update it. Yeah. The, the other thing, of course, sorry, is is that um, be careful about creating. Um, Duplicate content by um, by doing a new version of an old post. Don't do that. Sorry, Massa. Oh no. Um, yeah, I was wondering what is meant by reposting. Is does the content change at all? I mean, if you're slapping a new date uh, on an old article and posting it again, then that really isn't i think ideal um if you do update a content um and if your article is marked up um then you can add uh, date modified which i think google picks up um, um in the search results when it you know when it gives you a date um i think it does get reflected in that um you can use either open graph um, or schema.org, I think, to achieve that um, effect. Um, but that's if you have changed the content of the article. Thank you, Mr. Tuggy. Okay, any more? Number 11 on our run list is another one from Shika Shukla. It's titled multiple pages serving the same content. Uh, he said, if, if we have uh, multiple pages with uh, duplicate titles, meta descriptions and duplicate content, uh, but each page has its canonical version, uh, is this still considered in a, as a content issue? Do we need to no index these pages? as they are serving the same content. I love Michael Martin's response uh, on the uh, um, group on Facebook. Um, Michael said, I wouldn't know index them. I'd fix the canonicalization so that all of the duplicates canonicalize to a single URL. Yes, I think that's the thing to do. So it does raise a more fundamental question, if you like, of why do you have duplicates in the first place? Um, so yeah, I think canonical, canonicalizing to one URL probably is 
um, is, is a solution. Of course, the other solution is to um, keep just one version and redirect. Um, but um, if you have many pages that fall in the same category, then that might point to issues with how your site is structured. Okay. All right. Um, let's go to number 12 on our run list. Puma Perez says, I'm confused about backlinks. Um, Humor goes on to say, hello, I need help regarding backlinks. I'm, I'm working for a Norwegian uh, um website uh, search engine optimizer i'm confused about backlinks uh, should it be that uh, should they must be should they must be the same language or can i build backlinks uh, in english competition is low um what type of backlinks will be beneficial in the long term um, uh, perhaps a, a, a guest post from uh, uh, an English uh, website, a guest post from a Norwegian language website, um, build a, a private blog network network with uh, .no expired domains and start uh, writing um, the blog in the Norwegian, Norwegian language build a private blog network with any domain extension and start writing uh, the blog in the Norwegian language. What's the other off-page SEO things that will be best for that purpose, like social signals, etc.? Please explain what you think is best in this case. Thanks. Hey, Micah. Hey, how's it going? Oh, good, good, good. Um, I should, should say that my mic here is uh, um, a, um, the moderator of a, uh, um, a well-known SEO meetup group. He's also the uh, vice president for SEO for, for Turn River Cab. Uh, is that right? On the East Coast? Sorry, West Coast. No, East Coast. Well, West Coast, West. West. The good West. weather is the opposite coast <laughs> in the northern hemisphere. Okay, I got distracted. I, I saw Tim Cappy there, Kappa there, and uh, um, he, he seemed, <laughs> you know, happy and totally distracted. It's, it's, it's through me. <laughs> um, why, why do you? Um, say that this is uh, everybody wants you to answer this question too i don't know what it is i think i think they're they're waiting for the the chainsaw to to come buzzing through uh, i see well i wouldn't have pressed it in mm. that so yeah. right the Ah, okay. I'm not going to fill in. <laughs> okay, so this like, I think you're completely, you know, missing the whole flipping point here about about, about links. Okay, um, because you've got in your head that links are the all all important, everything be all and end all. Okay. Uh, and unfortunately, newsflash, they're, they're not. Um, they, they, they do help if, you know, they, um, you know, they, they, they do help, but they're not the be-all and end-all. Um, the first thing I'd be looking at is, um, like, well, Osama um, mentions you can always look at your competitors' uh, backlinks. 
not always a brilliant thing to do because you know unless you're very you know um you know sort of a fay with this you could be looking at um some like second rate web 2.0 link and going oh shit he's got a web 2.0 link i need to go and create some web 2.0s the, the point is you don't know whether google's counting those or discounting those um most likely discounting them well you must remember that um <laughs> over the last sort of 10 years ever since you know penguin was around in that in that sense uh, literally the millions of people that submitted uh, reconsideration requests from manual actions with their shit links. Um, you know, we basically told Google everywhere possible that you can go and create crap, spammy links, which now Google doesn't penalize in that sense, or they still do manual penalties, but essentially now they just handle them better and just discount it completely. So you could then again now analyze a competitor. You're assuming that their visibility is based on backlinks, which is a completely wrong assumption. And, and then um, building the same crap, which doesn't do anything for you because ultimately Google is discounting or just completely ignoring all of those. What I would be concentrating on is building a site that people want to actually link to. So um the first kind of thing is i would analyze your competitors but analyze what they don't have on their site so um let's just say you're doing horizontal screw bits right and you look at your top five horizontal screw bit suppliers and nobody has a definitive guide on picking the correct horizontal screw bits for a particular job masonry uh breeze um wood uh whatever and there's your opportunity and you can create you know this massive brilliant guide that is going to benefit all your different types you can link through to all your, all your different things on site um uh, and, and, and it's going to be, a um, you know, it's, it's going to <clears throat> be seen as valuable. It's going to be displayed and it will do far more for you than some crappy web 2.0 backlink somewhere that you literally purchased to do an article. Um, the other thing is, is that what you do then get is when you've produced something of value you will get for example if you created that you'll get any new tradesmen out there or you you can then start looking on trade tra tradesman forums for example and find where someone goes well which is the best horizontal screw bit to use and you can go um well look here's here's here we've got you know we've obviously provided a selection of them but this guide can potentially help you and then of course once you start getting it out there in that sense people then start naturally linking to it as it becomes more known and more visible and you start generating actual natural na natural links back to it right so seo is marketing right in 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 that kind of sense in in a broader in a broader landscape and you need to now if, you know start actually marketing the business the product the service and start looking for opportunities that your competitors haven't quite seen or haven't done well and capitalize on that. And that's how you start appearing for better search queries during the purchases research phase, putting your site into their funnel of what they potentially would search and creating content to, to intersect their different search queries. That is going to be far better then going out there and building up links which may or may not hurt you or may or may not do anything for you, especially if at this stage you're saying, I'm confused about backlinks, you are far more likely to hurt your site rather than actually do anything of benefit to it. So the thing that I would say is concentrate on marketing the site, looking for opportunities, to intersect the purchasers search queries put your content and your product in front of them there 
and then allow them naturally to start building up links to the site. Okay. Well, I think we're at the time. Uh, let me see. Yes, it is that time. It's uh, thank you for watching time. Um, now, do we have any more items of general business before we close the meeting for tonight? No? Okay. okay we can't go without uh, thanking the, the, the people who uh, um, turn up day after day uh, answering questions on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. And um, especially you guys. Um, uh, they're turning up uh, every uh, every Thursday, year after year. Um, Masataki Wasa, David Razam, Tim Kaffer, Micah Fisher Kirchner. Um, yeah, we'll be back at the same time next week um, to do this uh, all again. Okay. Uh,